Welcome back Troglodytes to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. We are almost done with the Parallel Universe Volume 2 series. It's still up in the air if they're actually going to do a Volume 3 or switch it up or take a break for 2021. But today, let's go ahead and check out the alternate version of the Jazz Strat. You can check out this video if you happen to catch that. That's when they put Jazzmaster Electronics in a Stratocaster body. They gave it the weird little wangly jangly bar, but this time they did it the opposite way. And I've got to say, this is my least favorite looking one from the whole series. But if you've been following all these reviews and demos, I also did not like the look of the Uptown Strat. I thought it was the ugliest one of the whole series, but you know, it kind of grows on you. But it ended up being my favorite sounding and playing one. So let's go into this review and demo with, you know, an open eyes and an open heart to see if the Strat Jazz Deluxe can open my eyes to its beauty. <laughs> I don't know about this one, guys. I'm just reviewing this one for you. Fender beat me to the video on this one, but that's because I was busy doing other stuff. I could have made the video first. <laughs> Let's go ahead and look at this thing. Oh. I've got to say, I like it even less in person so far. It's so blocky and clunky. I don't know, I kind of like it in a in a roundabout way. Let's take a look at it here. So first off, the big claim to fame for this one, why you would want it, is because, you know, it's the Jazzmaster body shape, except for it's got the single coil pickups, and namely, the neck on this thing. I mean, check it out. It's all rosewood. Now, I love all rosewood PRS necks, but for some reason, I just don't jive with the Fender ones. I don't know what they do that's different, but I will say so far, this one has a little bit more of a glossy feel to it. Like sometimes with these guys, you can actually feel the wood grain and you kind of still can. I would say out of all the rosewood Fender necks I've had so far, I like this one the best, just based off of feel, first impressions here. That's gonna gloss up real nicely. So I'm wondering if I just happened to get a neck that had not so much wood grain that you can feel. Like on the headstock, you can feel all that. Or maybe they did something different this time, because I'm actually really enjoying that for some reason. But I, I didn't even know to expect this. Like, I thought this was going to be a nice, you know, Jazzmaster body that's all contoured and everything. But it's blocky, like a Telecaster. So we've got like a Telecaster mixed with a Jazzmaster mixed with... A Stratocaster, they have really done a lot. Like this doesn't feel very ergonomic in my opinion. Like there's no comfort cut back here like you're used to on a Jazzmaster. I'm surprised we don't even have the Stratocaster little thing right here. And the color choice, can't say it's my favorite because it's kind of like a, a see-through turquoise greenish color. I mean, you can just barely see the wood grain through it. And I think it's supposed to have a flame top, but And then you get the gold pick guard with kind of the brownish neck. I'm sorry if I'm being a Debbie Downer, but you know, I don't want to lie in these reviews. This has to be my least favorite one from the whole series so far. But as far as our case candy and stuff goes, we get the mint green case. And if there's one thing I can say that's good about this whole combination is, you know, black, green, you open it up, you get kind of a black, green color. So you get some uh, symmetry going on there. Cream plastics. Looks like we get some sort of a, a push pot there, which I'm, I'm not quite sure what that's going to do with Stratocaster single coils. And it does appear to have a regular five-way toggle switch right here. And it's pretty chunky too. I'm surprised they didn't like uh, chamber out this body. I mean, this is bigger than a Telecaster. As far as our case candy here, looks like just a uh, basic standard stuff. No special strap or anything. They should have a COA in here. Yep, it's just a basic little piece of paper. Nothing too crazy. So yeah, let's go ahead and throw this very strange guitar on the workbench and take an individual look at its parts and specs to give it, you know, a fair try. That's what this channel is all about. Give everything a fair shot, despite what we think it looks like. the Strat Jazz Deluxe. Now keep in mind while we're looking at this, this guitar is $2,299 brand new at the store. I'll let you tell me if it's worth it or not. But first off, stock from the factory, you get three Texas special pickups here. So these guys are like a really aggressive single coil, I've been told. And these are custom shop level pickups within a production level instrument, so that's nice. 
But you can see right here, if you happen to not like those pickups or want to modify your guitar, look at this. Great, you can actually put a humbucker in the neck, you can put a humbucker in the bridge. You're stuck with a single coil in the middle, but hey, that's okay. But here we can see our barcode, Jazz Deluxe. Looks like we get the letter A right there, another little barcode, and another little barcode dating this one to late 2020. But what I was really curious about this thing, because you can see it just barely has a flame maple something underneath it. I was curious if it was a veneer or an actual top like it's advertised. So a veneer, it's like really paper thin. A top, there's at least a decent thickness to it. Now, unfortunately, I mean, you can look in here. You cannot really see anything underneath the shielding paint and then underneath the regular paint on top of that. So I took a little bit of sanding paper. Yeah, that's right. I took the sacrifice for you guys to see for sure what it is. So you can see the alder body right here, and then at the top, it is definitely a top. You can see the flame maple stripes right there. So it is indeed a flame maple top, but it's not quite as thick as the binding is. I just thought that was kind of interesting. Flame maple top on an alder body? However, I don't feel that they made the finish transparent enough. Like, you can just barely see, like, some really tight pinstriping. Honestly, I think it was kind of a waste of time to give these things a flame maple top if you can't see it. But it's kind of a unique and quirky spec anyways. I mean, a big bulky jazz master body. I mean, it's different. It's different. That's for sure. But as far as the rest of our electronics here, you do have a push push pot on your volume position and then a regular tone down here. You can see it looks like 250k pots and then you get a nice quality five way selector switch and it's all shielded off right there. And as far as the rest of the cavities, it has a P right there and an A on painter's tape. That's interesting. I guess you see that right there too. Not sure what that's for. And this whole assembly is on a single ply gold pick guard. That's kind of like a combination of Strat meets Jazz Master, I guess you could say. So you're probably curious, what does this push push pot do? I went to Fender's website to find out and it's not even listed on there. So I watched Fender's actual video on this thing. I get through the whole thing. It's like, oh, do I have a freak? Am I not supposed to have this? No, they don't mention it till the very end. This is kind of like an S1 switch. It brings your neck pickup in to your other positions. So instead of just bridge, if you activate that, you now have the bridge and neck positions. And of course, in your two position, when it's normally these two guys, you can bring the neck pickup in for all three. So you technically have seven different tones within this guitar. So those options being neck, neck and middle, just middle, middle and bridge, just bridge, and then you can bring it in bridge and neck and all three of them together. I thought it was kind of nice that they put the output jack on the side because you normally find that on like the Ultra Jazz Masters and Stratocasters, they're on the front too. I'm sure they could have found a way to put a recessed one in there, but I think I'm happy where they put it. So kind of a weird freak of a guitar. Like when I call this thing chunky, you're probably wondering how, just how chunky is this thing? I'm betting it's kind of like a Les Paul. Is it two inches? Let's find out. Okay, maybe not that bad. 1.66 inches. So to put that into perspective, most Les Pauls are about two. So it's not quite as chunky as a Les Paul with a carved maple top, but this is very chunky for a Fender guitar. At least a Fender guitar that's an offset body shape because normally they're all contoured and stuff. I think that's the reason why it looks so weird. As far as the trem, it's the two-point synchronized tremolo system with the bent steel saddles. Pretty nice little tremolo, and it is the poppin' bar style. Moving on here, we have a solid rosewood neck, which means, you know, it's not just a rosewood fretboard, it's just everything. One piece of rosewood. They're kind of cool. And so far, I've really been liking the feel of this one. Now, as far as QC goes, I do see, like, a small scratch or impression right there. I mean, I'm not really that worried about that. But we do have 22 narrow tall frets, and you get the perloid block inlays. They definitely help break up the monotony of all rosewood and makes this feel slightly more jazz mastery when it's technically a Stratocaster neck. As far as the scale length, it's just your typical Fender 25 and a half inches. Then stock from the factory, a bone nut that measures 1.68 inches. And then that increases to, looks like about 2.03 by the 12th. With a modern C-shaped neck with a first fret neck depth of 0.82. And stays fairly consistent, 0.89 by the 12th. As far as the headstock, you can see your truss rod axis right here. I kind of like the way that the walnut looks transferring into rosewood. It reminds me of chocolate and you get a little bit of a streakiness here. That's the other thing, just because mine is all, you know, fairly uniform, not all of them will be. Some of them will have a little bit more of this red streakiness in it. And despite being the Stratocaster style headstock, it still says Jazz Master at the top with the wispy winds, and that's the laser engraved. But we have the vintage style tuners that you poke the string down and then you wrap it around. 
Moving on to the back here, it's kind of like a Stratocaster. You get this like uh, vintage yellowish looking back plate here. And inside, here's what you get. For those of you curious, yes, a magnet does stick to the back block. It is nice to see the alder wood grain back here. I think this actually comes through better than the flamed maple, to be honest. But still, you know, it's not in your face. So if you like kind of a surprise when you're up close and looking at it, that's what this has. And our serial number is actually on our neck plate for this particular model, and it reads Parallel Universe. As far as the sides go, uh, nothing really too special. You can just barely, once again, see through to the wood grain. And the strap buttons are in the regular locations at the bottom and at the top of the horn right here. Kind of an interesting side profile view. White to mint green to rosewood to white to green to gold. And the output jack itself is kind of like uh, the Telecaster versions. And honestly, I think that's who this guitar is made for. People who love the bulky feeling of a Telecaster, but wants to try an offset, because that is exactly what this has going for it, in my opinion. And this neck, I took a little bit of polish, this Virtuoso stuff, I mean, you can use whatever you want, and I just really went to town on the back of the neck and kind of uh, naturally turned that satin finish into not a full gloss, not really even a semi-gloss. It's just, I noticed that these rosewood necks from the factory always have like a... I want to call it like VOS from Gibson. Like it just has some sort of a coating on it that makes your hand smell. So now that that's all off and it's kind of slightly polished up, this is a really like ridiculously smooth feeling neck because they always seem to dry my hands out on the Fender Rosewood necks, but that PRS never did it. I think that's the key to these things. And hey, if you happen to be watching this on the absolute day of me uploading this, Today is the last day for the Fender Mod Shop that they're offering solid rosewood necks. So if you want to custom order your own thing, well, you probably only have a couple of hours. But that is something that they just sent me an email saying, hey, we're discontinuing this. But the back of the tuners, they're just the Klusen in style. And the last spec to capture is the weight at 8 pounds, 14.3 ounces. So all in all, it's not my favorite design, it's not my favorite shape, but it is a well-constructed guitar. It's got nice electronics, it's got fancy electronics, and I've come to really appreciate this rosewood neck on this example. It's also worth mentioning that this utilizes nitro finish, so that is an upgrade from like a regular poly finish fender. But the ultimate deciding factor on this one for me is, you know, how does it sound? How does it ultimately play when you're standing with this thing? Let's find out. Alright, so first impressions holding this thing, it's completely balanced. It's a little bit body heavy, honestly, but it keeps it in the position that you want it to, so that's good. Let's go ahead and run through these tones, starting with our neck position. nice sounding neck pickup in general, I would say. Nice and girthy, I would say. Let's try the neck middle combination. like it. It's uh, slightly quirky sounding, I guess you could say. Still has plenty of bite to it. That is one thing I'm noticing. I have to tune this guitar quite a bit. Let's try just the middle position now. and the bridge. Bye. 
finally, just the bridge. versatile guitar and we're still on the clean sections. I'll cycle through that one more time just so you can hear the differences between each. switch over to some distorted tones. like the uptown strat it's kind of ugly it's kind of chunky but man does it sound good especially with a little bit of distortion so yeah uh, it doesn't necessarily look very pretty to me but you know in the eyes of the beholder i guess you could say so if you like the look of this thing or you happen to like the tones at least try some texas special pickups out because you know, I, I think this is my first set of these things. I could be wrong about that, but I do enjoy the tones. It's kind of like playing a Telecaster, except for it's in the offset shape. So if you've always hated that offsets are kind of, you know, rounded, have comfort carves, and you just want a big chunky block of wood, 
I did enjoy this guitar. I really think it comes down to this rosewood neck since I kind of cleaned and polished it up, conditioned the fretboard. It's nice and smooth. You can do all those bends and stuff. And hey, my fingers aren't even all chewed up. So yeah, I was all ready to put this at the very bottom rung of the whole Parallel Universe Volume 2 series. And I think cosmetically it still belongs there, but its playability and sound kind of puts it up towards the upper 50%. I still need to get the Jazzomatic before we do like an official ranking of every single one, but I think that is the last one in this little collection that we'll do. So hopefully we'll see that in another month or two. So troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed learning about the uh, Strat Jazz Deluxe, I think it's called. I can't remember. As far as some negatives I found about this guitar, honestly, I was surprised. On a brand new guitar, the output jack is kind of loose. I got some moments where it's like a little bit crackly. I'm not sure, maybe it's just my lead that's getting worn down, but it really feels like just the jack itself is a little bit loose. And uh, the tuning, I felt like I had to continuously tweak this thing. I mean, it's not like it's dropping tuning crazily. I'm sure it just has to do something with the setup of the Strat style bridge. And I'm never very good with those things. But here's what it looks like under black light. Nothing really too fascinating, to be honest. I certainly enjoyed my time with it. I mean, it has its shortcomings, but you know, it's a nice guitar at the end of the day. All right, take care.